Welcome to Lesson 10D, Room Ventilation Effectiveness. We're going to discuss two more parameters, room mean age and room ventilation effectiveness coefficient, and talk about how they're used. These are designed to look at how well mixed rooms are. So let's take a room. We have some flow rate in, and we have some exhaust coming out here somewhere, and that's the same Q, a nice simple ventilation system. Last time what we did was we picked some point, call it P, and we said, well, this flow comes in and since it's turbulent, so this flow might do that the first time and do that, some other particle will do that. All these different paths to P and then you take kind of an average of it and I didn't go into the details of how you do that, but you can imagine doing something like that. And then we get what we call T age P, which was the local mean age at some point. Today we're gonna to do something very similar except instead of point P, we're gonna take our point right here at the exhaust. We don't really care about P anymore, but you're looking at the entire room and some flow has a path like that, another flow may have that path, and it may go up here and it may get stuck in a vortex for a while. But all of these particles that come in eventually after a lot of mixing go out. Some may go kind of straight out and some may go circuitous routes, but they all eventually go out and we'll define this sort of global property we're going to define T room average as the room mean age. So it's not a local mean age, it's a room mean age. It's averaged over the whole room then. In other words, it's a global property of the room, like TN was, that average residence time, TN. To measure this, we do the same thing we did for the one at point P, and that is we use a step-up tracer experiment where we inject a tracer, it's called step up because we're going to have air coming in with some concentration C, so C equals zero at the inlet until time T equals zero, and then C equals some constant from then on. So we just add SF6 or helium or something that we can measure, then usually something not very harmful, and then we have some kind of a sensor right at E, that measures the concentration of that tracer. Q is constant, so what we expect then in this experiment is we would have a plot of C versus time, but we're gonna plot it as CE over CE comma SS. And so that quantity is normalized. It goes from zero to one. So if I draw a horizontal dash across there, we know two points. We're gonna start at zero for any kind of a room and we're gonna end eventually out here at infinity or steady state. We're gonna to get to CE equals CE steady state eventually. It may take longer for some rooms than others. If you do this with a perfectly well mixed room, you would get our standard first order ODE solution. But in real life, you may get something quite different. In a real room, you start injecting this contaminant at time t equals zero, and you're not gonna sense it for a while. It's not perfectly well mixed. It'll take some time. So normally, the curve doesn't look like that, but it starts out at zero, and then it'll start slowly increasing. And it might have some wiggles in it and stuff, but eventually it's gonna to get to CE. If you think about it, the integral to the left of this and under one, this whole shaded area, is equal to the integral zero to infinity of one minus CE over CE SS DT. And that will end up being the denominator in our equation that we'll define in a minute here. Keep that in mind. Last time we talked about a characteristic time TN, which was simply one over capital N or V over Q, the time to displace one room volume if we had ideal displacement ventilation. And then we defined a local mean age which was the same thing we're just doing, except we have it at some point P instead of at E. And then we define this effectiveness coefficient at a point TN over TH. Now we're gonna define this T room comma average or room mean age, which is a similar kind of thing. An average time it takes for a fluid particle entering the room through the supply to reach the room exhaust instead of P. This was point P, this is room exhaust, but otherwise it's the same. The difference is it's averaged over the whole room. It's a global property, as I said, because everything ends up going to E. Here's how we define it mathematically. It's the ratio of two integrals, and the bottom, the denominator, is this area of the region that's shaded in blue there that I mentioned already, one minus the curve. 
we put that in the denominator. And in the numerator, we have the same thing, except we have an extra t thrown in there. And that will give us dimensions of time, which is what we want. And now we're going to define E room exactly the same way we defined local mean age. We now call this a room ventilation effectiveness coefficient, E room, but it's defined the same way TN over T room average. The only hard part about these problems is this equation because those integrals can get nasty. Some comments, it turns out that E room varies between zero and two. If it's between zero and one, that means it's not well mixed. In other words, the room as a whole has a slow response time. So you have a ventilation system and you don't have any kind of fans or something. There's nothing moving the air around. You're going to have pockets where it's very high concentration, pockets where it's low concentration, so it's not well mixed. We know that if we have E room less than one. If E room is equal to one, this would be perfectly well mixed. So if you take this red curve here, which is the ideal well mixed case, and do the integral, it would be the area here above that curve. And we have an equation for that. If you go through the math, which I have done, you will find that E room is exactly one ideal dilution ventilation. As we keep going up, if E room is between one and two, this means that the mixedness is in between ideal dilution ventilation and ideal displacement ventilation, somewhere in between the two. And then finally, when E room is equal to two, this is ideal displacement ventilation. Ideal displacement ventilation is kind of tricky because it has perfectly well mixed in the part of the flow that's been influenced by the inlet, and then it's pushing out that stale air. And we're going to deal with that one as our example, actually, so you'll see this in more detail. So those are the possibilities. You can think of E-room sort of like an efficiency. It's an efficiency for ideal displacement ventilation. In other words, the bigger the number, the more closer it is to ideal displacement ventilation. Uh, but I thought all efficiencies go from zero to one. You're right, Pops, and I was just about to mention that. Uh, well, what'd you say? I said I was just about to mention that. Oh, uh, okay. Thanks, Sonny. It's sort of like an efficiency for ideal displacement, if you call that best except for a factor of two. Well, let's do an example. You have ideal displacement ventilation in a room of volume V, volume flow rate Q. Calculate the room ventilation effectiveness coefficient. We're talking about ideal displacement ventilation. So let's review quickly what we mean by that. Best example of that would be if I had a room with evenly distributed tiny holes on the floor where the air is coming in, supply air Q, and then the exhaust would be coming out little holes in the ceiling, and there's no mixing going on at all. So you have at some time T, this region, you'd have C equal constant here, and you have C equal zero here. So the stale air is actually the clean air, and you can think of this interface between the contaminated air and the clean air is like a piston pushing the stale air out everything's uniform right to left and front to back in this room. There's nothing special about any one place. So you can pick any of these and call that E and put your sensor there and measure CE as a function of time. By the way, at T equal TN, we know that all the air is displaced. How do I know that? Because TN was 1 over N, and N is the number of room air changes, or it's a volume over Q. So in other words, TN is the time it takes to displace one room air volume if I deal with displacement ventilation case. Well, that's what we're talking about. So it takes time TN for this air to move all the way up to be exhausted. What does this look like in terms of our plot? We know we're going to start at zero. Suppose you're sitting at the sensor. How long does it take for this to sense anything? It's going to sense C equals zero until this piston, uh, this interface, reaches the top. That's going to take time Tn. So we can easily plot this. C is zero until we reach this magic time Tn. And then suddenly it'll be a step function. Just jump right up to one and then be one from then on to infinity if you keep injecting that contaminant into the room. 
So here CE equal CESS at T greater than TN and C equals zero at T equals zero to TN. So it's a stepwise function. And just as I had drawn this curve before and we said the area in the denominator was the shaded area above the curve, in our example, it's just this area here. So it's between one and the curve. And then once you hit TN, it essentially goes to zero because one minus CE over CESS is zero. And here it's one. So this area equal the denominator of T room average. This is the denominator. We also have to do the numerator where we have to put another T in there. If the denominator is trivial. The area is the height times the width and the height times the width is one times TN. So this area is equal to one times TN equal TN. So that's the denominator, just TN. In order to do this mathematically, the denominator of this T room average time is equal to integral zero to infinity of one minus CE over CE SS DT equal, and I'm just gonna break it into pieces. So this is a two piece curve. We would go from zero to TN as our first piece or section one minus CE over CE SS DT plus integral of TN to infinity, one minus CE over CE SS DT. So you split it up and it should be immediately obvious that when CE is equal to CE SS up here, then one minus one is zero. So this whole term is zero. We don't even have to worry about it. And this one you can integrate and this would be one minus zero. So that's just integral dt, which is t itself, and then you evaluate the limits equal tn. So I've proved mathematically what I can see graphically that that area, is, the denominator is just tn. All right, now the numerator involves the same kind of thing, but a little more algebra always because we have an extra time in there. Integral zero to infinity of t times one minus ce over cess. Again, we're going to split it up, integral zero to Tn as our first part of this piecewise function of T times one minus, and what's the value of CE over CESS? It's zero between zero and Tn, integrating with respect to DT, plus integral of Tn to infinity of T times one minus CE over CESS is one. So again, this whole second part becomes zero. We don't have to worry about it anymore. We just have to integrate this guy. That's just T dt. So this is equal to T squared over two and then put in the limits zero to Tn. So this is Tn squared over two. So that's the numerator. Once we have the numerator and the denominator, we can write T T room average is numerator over denominator. It's actually this equation this is T room average, numerator over denominator. We've calculated both of these. And so we get our answer for T room average. And we end up with TN over two equal our T room average for this example of ideal displacement ventilation. And then finally, what we really want is E room, TN over T room average equal TN over TN over two, which is what we just found. And that gives you two and that's unitless. There's no dimensions. It's just a ratio of times. So our answer is E room equal two for ideal displacement ventilation. And that agrees with what I had written. E room is two for ideal displacement ventilation. So we've just kind of double checked that with all this math. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos. That's all there is to it.